fish. All right. Good morning, everybody. This is the regular monthly open meeting of the Third Laguna Hills Mutual Board of Directors, a California nonprofit mutual benefit corporation. Echoing in the vastness. Um, today is Tuesday, July 19th, 2022, and it's 9.30 a.m. We're in the boardroom, as well as on TV6, Zoom, and Granicus. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And looking around, I see that we have a quorum present. Yeah. We'll now make our Pledge of Allegiance, led by Director Ralph Ingle. Ralph? Please stand and join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ralph. All right, I'd like to acknowledge the third members who are present here in the boardroom, as well as those that are watching on TV and uh, via Zoom and Granicus. And I'd also like to acknowledge any media that may be present in the room or watching. It's now time to approve the agenda. Can I get a motion to approve today's agenda? Donna moves. Second. And uh, Annie seconds. Does anyone have any changes they'd like to make to today's agenda? Looking around, I see none. I would like to make a, a change and move 11D out of the consent calendar. That's the updated committee assignments and make it item 13B under new business. Um, there's just a, a couple changes that need to be made there. Anybody have any issues with making that change? All right, any other changes? Did you say 13B? Uh, uh, yes, I'd like to make agenda item 11D to 13B. Got it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any issues with that change? Any other changes? Jules, you're back. Any issues with the agenda? All right. I will, with no objections, uh, the agenda is considered approved by consent. Let's now look to approve the meeting minutes for five different meetings. Let's address each of them separately. Uh, oh. <laughs> Can I get a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the open budget meeting held on March 24th? Annie moves. Jim seconds. Thanks. Does anybody have any changes or issues with those minutes? Okay, if no uh, requested changes, we'll consider them approved. Can I get a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the open budget meeting held on May 31st? J Jim moves, Cush seconds. Thanks, you both. Anybody have any changes to that meeting? Minutes, the minutes of that meeting? Okay, actually I do. Um, uh, the very top um, of page one, it says that the date of that meeting was Monday, May 31st. Actually, that was Tuesday, May 31st. So if that change could be made, that would be all that's necessary. All right, other than that change, anybody have any issues with those minutes? All right, hearing none, we'll consider them approved by consent. Can I get a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the open budget meeting held on June 2nd? Jim moves, Donna seconds. All right, any issues with those minutes? All right, hearing none, we'll consider them approved. Um, three down, two to go. Can I get a motion to approve minutes for the board meeting, last board meeting held on June 20th? Uh, Ira moves, Kush seconds. Anybody have any changes that they'd like to? Mention, I see, see none. I do. Minor, minor change on the bottom of page 14 of 24. Um, th there's a, a, the very last paragraph, if you will, above item B. It says, hearing no changes or objections, the motion was called to vote and passed. And 92 directors Zalon and Bada oppose. So, so Kush's name is misspelled. Okay, thank you. Okay, but that's the only issue I saw. Anything else? All right, with that change, we'll approve that, uh, consider that approved. And finally, can I get a motion to approve the minutes for the agenda prep meeting on July 1st? Chris moves and Jim seconds. Thank you. 
Any issues, suggested changes to those meeting minutes? All right, we consider those approved. Thank you all. All right. We're now on agenda item six, uh, report of the chair. I do have a few things to say. Um, Starting with, it might not be apparent, but uh, the third board is currently operating with 10 board members rather than the normal 11, and that's because Director Craig Wayne resigned from the board at the end of June. Craig was near the end of his three-year term that was due to end in October. Uh, the board has several options uh, regarding filling an open board director position, uh, and one of those options is to not replace the board director if their exit from the board is within 100 days of the next election. And since Craig's resignation was within 100 days of the next election, that's the option that this board chose. Um, and mainly we made that decision given the focus that the board is uh, putting on to the budget. We thought it would be a distraction to try to bring somebody in for a very short term, uh, two or three month position. So um, that's what we've done. Just wanted to let you know that. Speaking of the board, there are a total of four board director uh, terms coming to an end this October. Uh, the normal call for candidates process that uh, was held in May and June of this year uh, elicited only three candidates. And since there are four open positions and only three candidates applied during the annual third board meeting coming uh, this October, those three candidates are expected to be seated by acclamation. So some good news about that is that uh, third won't have to have a, a real uh, send out mail ballots election, so that'll save third about $25,000. However, this does mean that there'll be an open board position uh, as of that annual third board meeting in October. So in the coming weeks, just want to let everybody know, um, we'll start the process of looking for uh, candidates to fill that uh, open director seat. Uh, information will be shared about how those interested people can apply and submit their paperwork to become a candidate and I anticipate that the board will interview and choose from among the qualified candidates sometime during the week of October 10th. So if you're out there, if you have ideas, uh, have some time and uh, you want to help improve your community, please volunteer to join the board to help set policy, help um, identify funding decisions and help improve things for your neighbors. Thanks. And then finally, I wanted to talk a little bit about the budget, um, which the board and the staff have been spending a fair amount of time on over the past uh, several weeks. Uh, while version one of the budget was delivered in June, and, and it suggested a 5% monthly uh, assessment increase for third in 2023. And I'm happy to say that uh, as a result of detailed scrutiny and discussion between the board and staff, uh, the version two budget w that was delivered last week has no monthly uh, increase for the third mutual portion of that assessment. Now you'll notice that I mentioned the third mutual portion. Let me kind of clarify things. Um, of your current monthly assessment, $559.62 or around 72% of your assessment goes towards third mutual and the other $217.50, or about 28% of your current monthly assessment goes to GRF. Okay, so for the version two of the 2023 budget delivered that last week, the third portion of the monthly assessment remains the same at uh, $559.62. However, the GRF portion, which is uh, currently $217.50 is expected to raise by $3.81 starting 2023 uh, to $221.31, which is an increase of less than 2%. So while the third mutual portion is expected to remain the same, the GRF portion will go up by a little less than $4. I mean, as mentioned last month, the budget process is iterative, so that's the, the current plan. The boards and staff continue to scrutinize and refine the uh, information to make sure we're squeezing out every last uh, unnecessary spend before we get to the final budget that's going to be approved in September. So um, while there's still work going on, just want to uh, say this again, current plan shows monthly increase assessments going from, or monthly assessment, excuse me, going from $777.12, which it is today, to $780.93, reflecting no increase for third and a $3.81 increase for GRF. 
And uh, as I have been doing, I'll continue to keep you up to date on this process over the next several weeks. And that completes my remarks for the day. As always, thanks for listening and thanks for your support. Now we're moving on to agenda item seven, where we'll have an update from uh, the VMS board. I believe the uh, director Wei Ming Tao is providing today's update. Thanks, Wei Ming. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, today uh, I'm gonna talk about the, the VMS update, and uh, we'll, the focus will be updates on our initiatives to uh, support our strategic goal of uh, facilitate operational excellence. Okay. Next page, please. For many operations initiative, we uh, I know that this is a very key issues with their mutual board, and it, that and we took a three prong approach. One is to look at uh, the, our process, and we are re currently re engineering the, our our workflow processes. And then we will be focusing on customer service, recording telephone calls, make sure customers uh, complain are heard and uh, addressed. And the third, very importantly, is the, the uh, employee development and leadership and the area including training and training of employees in the department and also the leadership. And that's for the operation, uh, manner operation in initiatives. And there are several examples. The mobile application for resale inspection, uh, there will be a mobile application, okay? And then there will be streaming, streamlining mutual consent approval process. And third one is new mutual consent application status website link. And uh, in next month, August, that's client service meeting, there will be an overview provided at this meeting. Next plate. Yes. So the the mutual consent application status, uh, this was just implemented last Thursday. There will be a real time status for ap applicants and contractors, uh, eliminate duplicative manual processes, and reduce application processing time. And please visit lagunawithvillage.com resident at residence, manner operations, click mutual consent application status. Next page. For, the, for our initiative for measure our performance, third has completed uh, service order year to date through June, 9,138 service orders completed, 92% completed within 20%, 20 days and average Completion day is six days. And we ex exceeded uh, completion target with three exceptions. First one is paint, 86% uh, completed within 20 days. And that's because touch up paint tickets remain open until member scheduled work to be completed. And second one was pass control, 82%. Tickets are left open until issues are mitigated. And third one is mm, Damage restoration, 64%. Work order remain open until final unit inspection can be completed. Next, please. On the measure satisfaction area, the work order satisfaction survey, June's result holding steady in all categories. June 2022, we, have five, we had 502 responses. An average rating was 4.54. This compared to year to date through May was uh, 2,249 responses. Average rating was 4.56. They're all pretty, still pretty good. Next, please. Identify trends. We also, last time, we, we were given inputs that don't look at the good ones, look at the bad ones. So we follow up negative comments on score two stars or less. And we found out the key reason was lack of understanding of pest control treatment method and processes because it takes time to, to, to get that, like the bait box, it takes time to be effective. So, uh, so we are going to take action to initiate 
community community educational outreach regarding rodent, pest, animal control processes, coyotes, and bees. So it yeah, we'll educate people how long to wait to to make sure it is、uh, the bait box are effective. Ah,、uh, next please. The in the area of financial processes. Uh, in the accounting area, we move forward one week, month, and closing timeline. This will allow more time for review and analysis prior to distribution. This had begun in May twenty twenty two last month. Accounts payable. We used you you use AX for systematic processing of invoices. Before we email the invoice to work centers and enter AX upon. Code invoice receipt, so it's pretty manual. Now we are entering invoices right into the AX system and and systematically route files to work center, and this will improve the tracking of invoices and regular expense accrual. And purchasing area, annual contract. Before our annual contract, we had no term limit, and、uh, as long as the price rates remain the same. Now the new policy will be. We will have a three-year renewal、uh, limit that, after three years, will go out for for the bid, for a competitive bid. In the PO versus contract tracked by purchasing division, before we one contract will have se- several PO issue, the purchasing department only will be tracking POs, but not by total contract. And purchasing now start tracking total. PO and also the contract, and this is pretty manual.、Uh, hopefully, the ERP system will be automatically tracking this. Okay. Next, the budget process. We made several improvement in that area too. We added version one point five, providing board member path to zero change basic assessment, and highlighted management effort to revise budgets. We had version A, B, C, stressing. Uh, the for advocacy for residents, and we presented budget process overview at GVA meeting. We added vacancy factor for first time, meaning that either even though we are looking for a certain number of employees, we know there are ter- certain number of turnovers, so there will be you know budget during the turnover time will be but budget uh. uh Available but budget、uh, amount, so that we use that factor, so that we can be really more close to the act, what actually going to happen, and、uh, provide the year end projection for me, mutual reserve account, so we have better understanding what or whether we are at the year end with this new budget our year end we have enough reserve for it, and we compiling binder containing agendas and presentation organized by Virgin. In the employee de- development area,、uh, including the training, twenty、uh, during twenty twenty three budget process, HR di- director discussed training objectives with department heads for inclusion in departmental budgets. And by September one, we will identify, implement one meaningful professional development opportunity per department for current employees. And for fall fall of twenty twenty two, we will launch in house management training initiatives. In the、uh, KPI reporting, KPI stand for Key Performance Indicator. These are the key indicators for the top management to make sure taking the pulse of the operation. And we will report monthly on key front facing. We are reporting monthly on key front facing services currently. And that including in the community services, resale package processing times,、uh, maintenance area, maintenance area. Oh no, resident services, telephone hold time, counter wait times, and maintenance service order closure times, and resident service and maintenance, the customer satisfaction. We we are currently in the review of total complete、uh, KPI measurements and.、Uh, Also, so that and we are once it's finished, we are hoping it will be co co related with the ERP system. So, the, currently, it's a pretty manual 
uh, process. So by when we have the ERP system implemented, all the KPI will be automatically, hopefully will be automatically generated. I forgot to mention, we also implementing the, the manner alteration measures. This is all I have. I, I, we really, VMS really appreciate all the input. These are a lot of inputs from, from you guys and residents. So we continue to seeking uh, operation, uh, seeking uh, opportunity to improve our operation. And I really glad I see we really, the biggest improvement I see is now we have a team, team spirit culture. And uh, every, we used to have a silos and now I see our, our employees are excellent. They work together, they jump in, and they, this is a biggest area in strategic uh, planning is the cultural change. And we, I have seen the end, the light of the end of the tunnel, and I have to thank Siobhan to put the team together working hard. Thank you. Thanks. Wait, Thanks. I have a question. Thanks, Wei Ming. Yes. Um, are there any questions from board members for yes. Wei Ming? Donna? <laughs> you scooted out of there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, just one question. Back on slide number seven, when you talked about financial processes, you mentioned that the, in accounting, uh, the month and close time light was moved forward one week, but you didn't indicate how close to the actual end of the month that is. So, you know, it could be, if we didn't know, it could be three months later. You know? so, so how close is it to the actual yeah. end of the month? As Actually, yeah. The, you know, I my background from, from the finance. We When I was working, our our goal and our actual was three-day close. Okay, three-day means if it's June 30th, by July 3rd, working days, you will be closed. And here, I, when I first got here, I was just appalled. It was uh, like a month or two months. Well, that's why I was back. asking. And uh, so that's one thing that I was pushing to. I mean, you, you need to close it fast, then, then you can have time to analyze. So I think, I'm, don't quote me, but I think we, we are still at a three weeks closing, three to four weeks closing cycle. And uh, now I think we move ahead for one week. One of the areas that we are stressing is so that we will, because before we were just reporting, we have no time to analyze. We want to improve our uh, finance and analytical skill. So point out where are the problems, where is the opportunity of improvement. So that with closing and move up, we have time to analyze it. Great. Okay, thank you very much, and thank you for that yes, report. Yes. It was great. Looks like Ira also has a question. Thanks. Um, back on... Uh slide two, when you're trying to enhance efficiency. I was curious if uh, you've been tracking uh, calls into resident services, web initiated versus phone call initiated uh, requests, and is one rising, one falling, they're both staying no. the same? Are you trying to push people uh, to use the web more to be more efficient? I can answer that for you. Uh, we started tracking that upon your request, I believe, two months ago. So we have that data. Right now it's static, but we do need to initiate the effort, as you suggest, to try to push more people towards using the website rather than telephone calls. But at least we're starting to track the data so we know what we have now and can initiate that. Thank Great. you. Great. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Any other questions for Wei Ming? All right. Thank you, Wei Ming. Lots going on. Thank you. All right, we'll now move on to agenda item eight, which is our open forum. At this time, members may address the board of directors regarding items within the jurisdiction of this board of directors and not on the agenda. The board reserves the right to limit the total time allotted for open forum to 30 minutes. Each member is asked to speak for no more than three minutes. A member may speak only once during the forum and speakers may not give their time to other people. Members not in the boardroom can also share their comments by joining this meeting via Zoom or by emailing your comments to meeting at vmsinc.org to have your message read during today's open forum should time permit. So Paul, do we have any speakers today? Yes, we have uh, Ms. Cheryl Fennick. Thank you. I don't know if it's your jurisdiction or not, or not but you'll let me know. So my, what I'd like to talk about is, a, is a, safety, a solution to a safety habit having to do with underground parking in the three-story buildings. So I live in cul-de-sac 202. So I, I turn into the cul-de-sac, and immediately I'm crossing 
entry and exit from underground parking on both sides. And then I continue my way back and get to my home. And there's a lot of traffic on that one road because there's a lot of housing back there. Um, I have had, I don't know how many near collisions uh, of people coming out of the underground parking onto the road that will take us back to Mariposa. The interesting thing is that there's a stop sign going into the underground parking, but there isn't one coming out of the parking. Kind of doesn't make any sense to me. And unfortunately, we have, you know, we run into um, drivers that may not be paying attention uh, too many times. Um, so you need good brakes, you need good peripheral vision, and you have to be very concerned that someone's going to run right out on you. And um, so I've been able to at least... Uh, being very aware of it, prevent a lot of accidents. I don't know how to go about doing it, but I think there's a need. Now, interesting enough, a lot of the underground parking doesn't necessarily have the same configuration that the cul-de-sac 202 has. And I would think that a lot of them do not. So we're not talking about printing um, sub signs to like 2,000 buildings or something. This is not, the numbers are not big. And I don't know what goes on in any other phase, but I'm just talking about phase two or gate five and six. So for your consideration, and if there's something I need to do, fill out a form or go to somebody else, just let me know and I'll do it. Thanks for listening. Thanks, Ms. Fennick. Ms. Fennick, yes. what is your unit, uh, your building number? Um, uh, the, my building is 2350. 2350. Which Perfect. means that I'm not on that line. I have to make a, one of the left turns and go down and get to my house. Well, but it's, I should have come with the numbers of the buildings. I'm sorry, I didn't do that. Um, but it's right off of cul-de-sac 202. It's right there. Okay, yeah. We'll Thanks. check it. Yeah, thank you. All right. Paul, any others? Uh, there are no other speakers at this time. Okay. There are no emails either. All right. Okay. Anybody have any responses to Ms. Fennick? Before? Before I do, uh, Ralph? I, I will take a look at that. I think, uh, Kusha, you're interested in that, too. Um, I think we both need to go out there and take a look at that, and anything else that's similar to it sounds like it's worth looking into. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I agree. So we'll, we'll, we'll be looking at it and getting back with you on our results. Thanks for bringing it up. Appreciate it. We're now on to agenda item 10, the CEO report. Yvonne? Thank you, Honorable President, members of the board. I have three announcements that I'd like to share this morning. First of all, a reminder that VMS is seeking part-time employees to fill various positions throughout the community. This includes a new position that we're calling a community center attendant, which will allow us to open up the building after hours for things such as table tennis, access to the computer rooms, and so forth. We're also going to use this position in the fitness centers and perhaps in community centers to extend hours of those facilities as well. So we're recruiting for part-time community center attendants, recreation leaders, bus drivers, and gate ambassadors. And just a reminder as to how one can apply for a job, it's a three-step process. You visit lagunawoodsvillage.com and click on careers at the bottom of the homepage. And then you click on residents under search our current job openings. Please click on the job you are interested in for details and to apply. So it's a very straightforward process if you are, again, interested in part-time employment. We've also had some questions recently about household hazardous waste materials and how residents may get rid of things such as paint and household cleaners and so forth. The City of Laguna Woods, through its contractor, WM Curbside, will collect materials that residents assemble from outside of their homes. To arrange for a household hazardous waste collection, please call WM Curbside at 800-449-7587. In terms of materials that will be picked up at no cost to the resident, this includes paint products, household cleaners, fluorescent tubes and compact fluorescent lamps, and miscellaneous residential materials such as batteries, propane tanks, and so forth. Not accepted would be ammunition, appliances, biological waste, liquid mercury, medication, and tires. And if residents need to know what programs are available to them, they can visit the cityoflagunawoods.org 
and visit the waste and recycling page for comprehensive information about waste programs, frequently asked questions, and more. And lastly, from our Recreation and Special Events Department, they've announced the Summer Barbecue Buffet, which will take place on Monday, August 22nd at Clubhouse 5 at 5 p.m. Tickets are available starting this Thursday at the Clubhouse 5 office. The cost is $25. The meal is catered by Martinez, and the menu features barbecued beef, oven-fried chicken, delicious sides, and apple pie. So just wanted to get the word out for that as well. And that concludes my updates this morning. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, I Siobhan. A, I have a question. Any questions for Siobhan? Annie? Thank you. Yes, uh, Siobhan, regarding the, um, the, the announcement you made about the staff and the positions available to keep the community center open additional hours, so do you have any idea of how, how many hours the community center would be remain open, and do we have staff to accommodate that now? Yes, we're in the hiring process right now. Some employees have been hired. They are currently being trained. We're about to answer the question about what will the extended hours look like. Um, we should be making an announcement later this week. But in essence, we're looking at a couple nights per week and then some Saturday hours as well to start, and perhaps then we can phase it in to be more comprehensive as we move forward. Thank you. Any other questions for Siobhan? All right, I had one for you, Siobhan, and that is um, when the board requests and approves changes to meeting minutes, where are those meeting minutes, those updated meeting minutes posted? They are posted on the website, but I can defer to Michaela if she has anything further for you. They are posted on the website. So, so, so the website is vast. Uh, so, um, so, for instance, I uh, went back to last month's board meeting, and we approved some minutes. And within that board meeting, if you look under the agenda, it has links to the minutes. Correct. And those minutes were not updated there. Um, is that where they should be? That is where they should okay. be. Paul then, and then I are still just working a, a on updating miss. them. I'll just let you, you know. Okay. 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 Thank but you. But that's where they should be. All right. Thanks. Yeah. No, no problem. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Uh, agenda item 11, consent calendar. Uh, so all matters listed under the consent calendar are recommended for action by committees and will be enacted by the board in one motion. Again, we moved uh, from the agenda, we moved 11D out of the consent calendar. So we're talking about uh, approving A, B, and C. Can I get a motion to approve the consent calendar? Jim moves, Ira seconds. Thank you. Are there any objections to uh, approving the items on the consent calendar, 11A, B, C? Yes, hearing none, we'll consider the consent calendar approved. Uh, agenda item 12, unfinished business. Uh, for agenda item 12A, I believe the staff has an update for us regarding the uh, interboard anti-harassment, anti-abuse, anti-intimidation policy and charter for and a charter for the joint hearing body. Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Um, if you'll remember, this board introduced the policy at its last meeting, as did Third Mutual and GRF. They, everyone introduced it at the June meetings. However, during those introductions for 28-day review, each board had questions, suggestions, enhancements, and so forth that we took back to the working group. The working group, just to remind you, consists of the three board presidents and the BMS chair, as well as staff from the compliance division, myself, and the security division. We took that feedback to our meeting discussed it and decided what we think needs to be incorporated into the proposed policy to make it stronger, to make it work for all that are involved. Again, it's an interboard policy. So the intent is to bring that back, hopefully for the August meetings, for a reintroduction and further discussion with each of the boards. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any questions from the board for Siobhan regarding that? Okay. Paul, any member comments? Regarding that? Uh, no member comments at this time. Great, thank you. All right, agenda item 12B is uh, to vote on whether or not to approve a revised guidelines for financial qualification. Uh, last month, the board voted to put this out for 28-day member review and comment 
Um, so today we'll be voting on whether or not to finally approve these revised guidelines. So first I'll ask Chris to read the resolution. The resolution for clarification of guidelines for financial qualifications policy. Whereas third Laguna Hills Mutual, third, is formed to manage, operate, and maintain housing at Laguna Woods Village. And whereas third is authorized to adopt rules and regulations to carry out the purposes of this corporation through its board of directors. And whereas third desires to protect the financial integrity of the corporation. And whereas third has expressed the need to clarify select income and net worth provisions of its guidelines for financial qualifications policy. Now, therefore, be it resolved July 19, 2022, the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby introduces one amendment to the financial qualifications policy, which amends a section Roman II net worth requirements subsection B to add, quote, U.S., unquote, before residential policy, and resolve further that resolution 03 2150 adopted August 17, 2021, is hereby suspended in its entirety and canceled. And resolved further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of this corporation to carry out the purposes of this resolution. All right. Thanks, Chris. Uh, can I get a motion to approve these revised guidelines? Jules moves. Jim seconds. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from board members regarding this? Jim? This is one to correct in the reading. She said residential policy instead of residential property. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. It's okay. <laughs> Remedial class. Yeah. Reading class. Okay. Any other questions from board members? All right. Paul, do we have any questions, comments from um, third members? Uh, there are no member of comments okay. at this time. Sorry. Okay. So uh, it's now then time to vote. Um, so, Paul, are we going to vote uh, automatically or are we going to raise our hands and you'll track things? So, so based upon a, a comment that, that I received uh, of people specifically on Zoom not being able to know who votes, we're, we're trying to do a little better job of tracking who's voting for what. So, um, Paul, guys, let us know what you'd like us to do. You guys should be able to view it on your screens in front of you. There should be an ability for you to be able to click whether you um, are in not, favor not, of. No, no, unfortunately not. I, I have an option to uh, do a motion or request to speak. Hmm? Yeah, I think they will do that if they can't get this to work. Again, trying something new to uh, add a little more visibility. So it looks like a few startup quirks. Do we maybe need to go through the motion in second on this so it goes to the next page rather than us just doing the motion by voice. Okay, so we might have to do it verbally just because we're experiencing some technical difficulties. Okay. We did try it before the meeting and it was working perfectly and, fine. So and, for and some reason there is some issues it, it going on. It just popped up. It just okay. popped up now. Okay, there so we, we can go. So we give it a try. Thank you. All right, so now time to vote automatically. See if it works. Uh, Director Lewis, can I get your vote, please? Oh, excuse me. Yeah. And Director Rain Zosak? The mover and second is wrong on here, isn't it? Yes, it is. It is wrong. Yeah. But that's okay. That we're just mainly for the moment trying to get the counts wrong. Right. Director Zosak, your, your vote? Are you seeing it? Donna, he needs your Donna. He needs your verbal vote. Oh yes. Do you, 
Okay. Somebody's missing. Uh, President uh, Laws. Okay. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> I can see the yes uh, highlighted on my screen, so I was assuming it worked. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So it looks like the um, motion passes. Ten yeses, zero noes, zero abstains. So thank you. We're moving on to agenda item 12C, and this is to vote on whether or not to approve the updated guidelines for the distribution of printed materials, specifically allowing door hangers to be included as an acceptable way of distributing printed information. The board voted last month to put this out for 28-day member review and comment. Um, so today we'll be voting on whether or not to finally approve these updated guidelines. And Chris, would you please read us this resolution too? Okay, uh, distribution of printed materials policy. Whereas the Resident Policy and Compliance Committee has recommended revising the distributing, posting, printed materials rules to fairly and reasonable address placement of materials within third, and whereas the board recognized the need to amend the rules to align with the changing needs of the community, now, therefore, be it resolved July 19, 2022, that the Board of Directors of this corporation hereby approves the amended distributing hyphen posting printed materials rules as attached to the official minutes of this meeting and resolve further the distributing hyphen posting printed materials rules will now be known as the distribution of printed materials policy and resolve further that resolution 03-07-59 adopted June 19, 2007 is hereby superseded in its entirety and canceled and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. Uh, there's a typo on now, therefore, okay. or there before, after. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. All right. Can I get a motion to uh, approve these uh, the, the motion uh, the, approve these guidelines for 28 day review? A any moves? And Donna seconds. Thank you. Any questions, comments from members of the board? And we've kind of heard this one before. Paul, any that doesn't seem like any need comments externally. Uh, no member comments at this time. Okay, great. So now it's time to vote again uh, as to whether or not we want to finally approve these. Hey, it's I, I, it's Director Rain Zosak, your vote. Yes. And <clears throat> sorry, Director Lewis. Yes. And President Laws. Yes. Okay. Okay, all right, so this item also passed with a vote of 10 0, 0. Thank you, board. Yeah. Moving to agenda item 13, new business 13A uh, is an update to one of our policies regarding when the board, as a disciplinary action, can deactivate cable and internet services. Today, the board will be voting as to whether or not to put this resolution forward for 28-day member review and comment. So again, first I'll ask Chris to read the resolution. Okay. Deactivation of cable <coughs> slash internet services as a disciplinary action. Whereas 3rd Laguna Hills Mutual 3rd desires to strengthen disciplinary actions and whereas the board recognizes the need to expand the option to deactivate cable slash internet service to all disciplinary matters when cases are brought for a disciplinary hearing. And whereas the GRF board adopted resolution 90 hyphen 17 hyphen 38, which GRF authorizes third to take disciplinary action against a member, which includes, but is not limited to, the suspension of the member's right to use the cable slash internet services. 
Now, therefore, be it resolved on August 16, 2022, that the Board of Directors hereby approves the activation of cable slash internet services as a disciplinary action and resolve further that resolution 03-17-49 adopted May 16, 2017 is hereby suspended and canceled and resolve further that the officers and agents of this corporation are hereby authorized on behalf of the corporation to carry out the purpose of this resolution. Okay, great, thank you. Can I get a motion to proceed with putting this resolution forward for 28 day member review and comment? So moved. Yeah, Chris moves, Chris seconds. Um, any questions, comments from members of the board? Okay, all right. No member comments at this time. Okay, no member comments from other than the board. All right, so now it's time to vote on uh, whether to uh, proceed with putting this forward for 28 day member review. Director Raines, does that your vote? Yes. And Director Lewis, your vote? Yes. Yes. And President Laws, your vote? Yes. Okay. All right. So this motion also passed 10 0 0, uh, 10 yes, 0 no, 0 abstain. Um, so this will be going on to 28 day review and be uh, looked at again uh, next board meeting in August. Okay. And now we're on to agenda item 13B. So this is updated committee assignments that I'd requested be moved from the consent calendar. Um, so since I asked it to be moved, I'll just kind of chat through it a little bit. So it looks like a, a couple of the committee assignments approved in June got reverted on today's copy. Um, so on agenda item 11D, page two of six, okay, I'd like to, uh, excuse me, yeah, yeah, maybe. I'd like to rehad Lynn Jarrett as a advisor to the Garden Villa Recreation Room Subcommittee. And I have one more change, so when uh, staff tells me they've got that one, I'll... Uh, you ready for the next one, Michaela? Yes. Okay. And then on page three of six, um, Residential Policy and Compliance Committee, I'd like to remove Lynn Jarrett and replace her with Jules Zalon, who's an alternate on that committee. Why not? Huh? Okay, thank you. Um, are there any issues with those changes that I've mentioned? Any other changes anybody's aware of? Okay. Any, any objections to those changes? Okay, if not, I'm going to consider uh, this, these updated committee assignments approved by consent. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Moving right along, we're now share our monthly third mutual committee reports, starting with a report of the Finance Committee. Donna. Thank you very much. And um, if we can have those slides up, it's a lot easier to follow numbers with them. This will be through the reporting period of May 31st. Um, and the first thing we look at is our total revenue. All we look at is revenue versus expenses and what the net is without looking at specific application. And while they're getting those slides up, um, I will read those numbers, which everyone will immediately probably forget. <laughs> but we had a total revenue in assessments of $17,256,000, which is a nice round number. Uh, Non-assessment revenue, much smaller at $837,000. And expenses were less than revenue. So actually, the most important part of this slide is that our net revenue versus expenses is positive of $4,428,000, and you can now see it on your screen. So let's move on. That's just a, a very broad, broad 30,000-foot uh, view. We then move on. What's more important, and certainly for as we move forward every month, is our operating income statement. And again, we're looking at assessment revenue and non-assessment revenue, but only in the operating budget. The other was just an overall view of everything. And as you can see, our assessment revenue 
of eleven million nine hundred eighteen thousand dollars, non assessment seven seventy five thousand dollars, and um, total expenses eleven million two eighteen, leaving us again an operating surplus of one million four hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. And it's always nice to see a surplus. The question is. Where does it come from and why? And the first thing we do is move over on our next slide to actually comparing the budget. At first, it was just the broad, broad view. But let's look at those same numbers. The first column where it says actual is exactly the same as that first slide. Those numbers are exactly the same. It's just the assessment revenue, the non-assessment, and the total and total expenses. But now we're comparing it to budget. And you can see that assessment revenue and budget um, actuals and budget were the same. Non-assessment revenue was a little bit less at $837,000 instead of eight seventy, dollars And our total revenue, therefore, just slightly under what was anticipated in the budget. Very hard to hit it exactly right. Um, total expense, on the other hand, was $13,665,000 compared to a budget of $16,849,000, leaving us with a positive variance of $3,151,000. And the question, of course, is where does that variance come from and why do we have a surplus? Because surpluses are good, but the question is where does it come from? So let's move on and see where we had the variance. This is my favorite slide today because it's all green. And green means the variances are all in our favor. Um, the first of the variances is in outside services. And you can see that that variance in our favor is $1,852,000. Um, but the question is, what led to that huge variance? Because we really work so hard on our budgets and try to hit them just right. The question is, how could you be off at that much? And the, and, the, and the answer is, that surplus had a lot to do with program activity not taking place, not taking place because of supply chain problems, not taking place because of staffing problems, all of the reasons that we've been hearing all year long that really led to work not getting done. So we love to see the positive variance. We don't like to see the work not get done. As the year goes on and as hopefully employment issues re, you know, resolve themselves and as supply chain issues do the same, we will expect that to be evening out. Um, insurance was a positive variance. The actual um, insurance costs came in lower than anticipated. We are required by our CCNRs to get full insurance value. That hasn't been possible. We come about to the same amount, whatever. The, we get the maximum the market will allow, and this time that came in at $612,000 less than budgeted. Always better in that case, in that particular area, to budget for higher and wind up having it be lower. Uh, the next, employee compensation and related expenses. Again, a positive variance of $514,000 due in large part to unfilled positions. And so again, not what we'd like to see, but we hope that by the end of the year that evens out because it means the work will get done. And last, legal fees, a positive variance of $162,000 due to actually changes in the way we interact with the attorney, with with channeling information and being a lot more, um, I don't know, just, a, it, just being more focused when we actually connect with our attorney to keep those bills a little bit lower. The next one, I'm a kind of a pie chart person. Pie chart person. Um, I know our accounting people like numbers and columns, but I find for, for me this pie is, is much more helpful. You can see that this is where our non-assessment revenue comes from, and we're looking at 837250 or 837 $1,255 set. Um, chargeable services, 30%. Permit fees, 14%. Lease processing fees, 13%. Laundry revenue, 11%. And resale processing fees, 10%. So you can see that approximately 75% of our non-assessment revenue comes from just those specific areas. And it's pretty constant and stays pretty even throughout the year. As we move on to the next slide, 
Here we're looking in terms of expenses. Where is the bulk of our, our expense? Not surprisingly, in employee compensation and expenses related to it, including benefits, et cetera. Uh, that is the biggest chunk. Insurance is second. Um, we wish it weren't, but it is. Utilities, um, third. And actually, that's something we have absolutely no control over. We actually have very little, if any, control over any of those three large areas. So we can do a lot on the on those smaller parts of the pie, but it's, it's really difficult and a challenge as we work with the larger pieces. As we move on to the next slide, we also look at our other funds. We first started, all of that was the operating budget. That's what we anticipate, that's what we expect to have, that's the money we put aside specified for certain things. But our non-operating fund balances, we also have to look at. And first of all, what, I, what I'd like you to do is look from the top, the beginning balances, to the current balances, because that, in the end, is the most important. And you can see that our replacement funds have increased. These are in thousands, so it's 19069000 started at the beginning of the year, and by May 31st, it was up to $21,325,000, so definitely growing. Very slight increase in the Garden Villa Fund from 104000 down to 123000 Disaster Fund also going up a bit from um, $5,442,000 to $6,171,000. And unappropriated expenditures, which is our contingency fund. That's that category for we don't know where it's going to the expense is going to come from, but we know there will be some unexpected expenses. And you can see that the unappropriate expenditures fund didn't grow by a whole lot, but it also is in more favorable than it was at the beginning of the year. And that, as we move on, concludes the numbers part. I always like, I told you I'm a visual person, so I like these graphs. And this is just to show you from year to year proportionately how those funds have changed in their in their quantities in their balances and you can see that the replacement funds is definitely much higher than it was back in 2018 with little ups and downs in between but definitely growing and the disaster fund has shrunk a bit. Part of that did have to do with the fact that in the beginning, the disaster fund included earthquake insurance and the anticipation of being self-insured for it, and we now have an earthquake insurance. So we can tolerate that fund being a little lower, but it's nice to see it growing again anyway. Uh, unappropriated expenditures, that stays pretty steady. You know, that's kind of, that's that little chunk that we put aside for the unexpected expenses. And you can hardly see it, but across the top, there's a very, very thin light line for Garden Villa Rec Room. Um, and as you saw in the other chart, that is growing slightly as well. So everything is looking very good. If we move on to the next slide and the last, pretty much the last one, that's our resale history. And you can see that other than in February when there was a drop, resales have been pretty steady throughout. And although in, in 2020 they were much lower because of COVID, there was a recovery in 21, and it seems to be pretty consistent this year. What is particularly interesting is the average resale price, which in 2020 went, went, was 427276 as a resale price average. And in 2022, so far, it is increased considerably to 519,809. We do have to keep in mind, and we're going to work with, with the folks who have these numbers to actually get a median as well as the average, because the average is taking everything, and, and it can be skewed by some very high numbers. And we've had some very large sales in, in a few units that really throws that number off. So to get a better idea of the real average value of our property, we're going to see what that median number looks like and hopefully have that for you next month. And with that, that concludes the Finance Committee report. Um, you already heard from the president that we have been having budget meetings, and that has taken up a great deal of energy. On the 15th, last Friday, we had a very large, that was our presentation of, of version 2, of the budget where, as you heard, we do not anticipate for third any change at all. And we thank everybody who's participated in that process because it's a lot of work. Great, great. Thank you, Donna.
It looks like Annie has mm -hmm. a question. Uh, if I wanted to go back to slide five. It's actually not really a question, but a comment. And it's kind of a good, bad comment <laughs> <laughs> on slide five. If, if, um, Which are the one that had the charge of the non-assessment of revenues? Revenues, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I'll find it on here. Yeah. Slide five. It's a pie chart. That yes, a pie you. chart, which is really, in, when I say good news, bad news, because it has to do with our non-assessment revenue, and that little purple, light purple, late fees, 5%, which is really good, which says that we're not making a lot of money from residents paying late fees, which is a good thing because residents are paying their assessments on time. So... That's, yeah, I thank you for news. noticing that. That is something that we understand in comparison to other HOAs, especially through the COVID time and inflationary times now, that our members are making their payments and they're paying their assessments. And so that's very good. And we're not having the late fee revenues because this is non-assessment revenue, but a late fee is a late fee. <laughs> and so it falls in there. Um, and that is that is exceptional and, and very good news. Thank you both. Any other questions for Donna? Since I've been open up. All right. The Architectural Controls and Standards Committee. Jim, you got an update for us? Okay. We met on June 27th. And in that meeting, I reemphasized the goal to reduce member wait time for variance approvals, staff preparation time, cost, and establishing many over the counter approvals, which will fast track future variance applications. Uh, Mr. Mejia also commented on some of the processes that he's going to go through to solve that problem and meet those goals. Uh, during our meeting, we had a, three variance requests approved. Uh, one was exclusive use common area that was uh, decorative column and partial removal of the trellis. And basically exclusion exclusive use common area that's not visible to other members that can be removed is now, because we approved this one, it can now be considered an over-the-counter variance, which will speed up processing time. We had another situation in reference to raising ceilings and soffits, which are within the cocoon of a person's residence. And along with that, we approved that and again, this type of variance now can be considered an over-the-counter variance. With getting more and more over-the-counter variances, this reduces time. We've already reduced time by the committee hearing and approving without it having to go to the board. So with this, if by chance the over-the-counter is denied, it can be appealed to the committee. If it's denied by the committee, it can be appealed to the board but it doesn't necessi necessitate this if it's approved over the counter, which will cut weeks off of the time frame for getting a variance. Uh, another thing that was brought up in our meeting was Director Zalin commented on the importance of members to protect themselves. And what he suggested was basically a one-page contract between the member and their contractor. Nothing to do with the HOA, but that this form might be supplied uh, in the packet that we give to contractors. And along with that, we wanted staff was directed to begin compiling all the contractor rules for editing and eventual submission to the compliance committee and for legal review prior to submission to have an exclusive type packet that could be handed out rather than having to search through our webpage to find out what all the rules are. So those are the goals. Those are the things that we're trying to do. And hopefully we'll move forward, shorten the variance processing time. And then again, our next meeting will be on July 25th, which is next Monday. We encourage everybody to attend and participate. Great. Thanks, Jim. Um, now the third communications committee. Annie? Uh, thank you, President Lons. The third communications committee met on uh, July 13th at 1.30, and it was a virtual um, meeting. 
some of the items that we discussed. First of all, we disseminated the charter again since it had been a while since the committee met. We disseminated the charter to the new members to have a look at and uh, bring back any suggestions or changes if there are any for at our next meeting. The committee discussed, had some discussion just regarding the actual purpose of the committee. And we, even though we are, we are more of a working group um, for third member, third mutual board to look at ways that we can communicate more effectively with our residents and how effective we are. We are, we are a working group. We don't have um, a budget. We don't have advisors. We just get together and look at how we're communicating and determine how best we can serve the needs of, of our community. Uh, there was some discussion regarding uh, just the assignments and who does what um, in terms of uh, TV6 and new resident orientation and um, writing articles for the Village Breeze. These are all the things that our directors participate in as well. We talked about, um, there was some discussion about the budget, and again, because we're not a, a committee that has a budget or have bylaws or anything, there was just discussion if, there, if we had any questions regarding the budget and how we can communicate that. Um, the next meeting is scheduled for August 7th, August 2nd, I'm sorry, at 1.30 p.m., and probably will be a virtual meeting. Okay, thank you, Annie. Um, we'll move on to the Third Maintenance and Construction Committee. Ron? Thank you, President Laws. Uh, the last third MNC meeting was held on July 7th. Mr. Gomez briefed us on how disputes regarding chargeable services have been handled recently in contrast to the methods spelled out in our documents. After discussion, we decided to follow the procedures spelled out in the documents because that's the way it should be. And uh, specifically, this means presenting the dispute to a three-member subcommittee of the MNC committee for quicker resolution rather than wait for the next regular MNC meeting, which could be weeks away since we only meet every other month. Uh, we also had a discussion regarding removal of a planter in building 2369. It's a, that's a Garden Villa building. Uh, that had been previously the cause of a couple of water intrusion events in the same unit. Uh, although no other, other events have been report, reported in this or other buildings, uh, the staff was to seek the opinions of our residents uh, regarding these planners. There was also a brief discussion of exterior, exterior let me try that again, exterior elevated elements that's in con conjunction with the Senate Bill 326 and the impact on the budget in 2023 and 2024. The first inspection is required to be completed by January 1, 2025. Um, we also briefly mentioned uh, reevaluating the roofing systems on some of our buildings, uh, considering the spray polyethylene foam. And that report is not done yet, but hopefully will be soon available for us. Uh, the next meeting of third MNC committee is scheduled for September 12th. Right. Great, thanks, Ralph. And we'll move to the parking and golf cart subcommittee. Kush. Thank you. Uh, parking and uh, golf cart uh, committee. There is nothing new to report today. Uh, the last meeting was on May 25th and was reported at the June meeting. Our next meeting is uh, July 27th, which is next week at 1.30 p.m. in the boardroom. Uh, our future meetings will be every other month on the fourth Wednesday, just in case people want to make a track of that. Thank you. Thanks, and, uh, and Ira, do you have any updates for us on the Garden Villa Rec Room subcommittee? Uh, I can do that through uh, staff notes as, uh, as I wasn't there. But uh, what was discussed was uh, the uh, Rec Room budget and reserves fund. And Donna had um, made mention in her report about uh, some of that, uh, the totals that they have and moving forward. Uh, there'll be an increase in their monthly contribution specific to uh, their Rec Rooms by 25 cents a year for the next five years and to, to maintain uh, uh, these rec rooms. Uh, there was also a discussion of uh, 
there, I think there are three kitchens and bathrooms uh, scheduled for floor renovations uh, starting in the middle of this month. And uh, a summary of uh, uh, rec room expenditures as well as uh, um, a component list was explained to everyone there. And uh, carpeting colors um, was discussed. Uh, the next meeting uh, would be uh, is to be announced, and generally this meeting is quarterly. So, great. And we'll leave the floor with you to update us on the Landscape Committee. Okay. So in the third uh, Landscape Committee, um, we had uh, discussed more about water than anything else. And... Uh, um, a little bit of a tree trimming um, and, and so on was explained to some of the people here that were uh, in present and uh, had, had questions. Um, there's also a, a good thing happening for a relationship between the ownership and landscape. Um, head of landscape uh, hired an additional administrative assistant to take care of all the landscape requests. So all of those should be getting processed faster and uh, hopefully none of them will uh, fall through the cracks. This was uh, uh, a good thing for, for everyone. Um, it was also stated the uh, additional clearing outside of gate 11 and the open space uh, would be expanding next year. Um, constant meetings with the fire marshal and the state with regards to this will end up moving next year from our 30 foot buffer zone to 100, um, which will help us prevent any fire coming through there in that wild area. I don't know if our insurance company will uh, acknowledge the benefit, but uh, hopefully so. You never know. And uh, we also talked about water. Um, we did reduce our, uh, put forth a policy for the board to approve uh, reducing our water consumption another 15%. And that did pass through, as well as uh, discussions with the Water Conservation Committee to develop a policy for people just overwatering there around their units. And so that uh, concludes what we, we discussed. And our next meeting is Thursday, August 4th at uh, 9.30 here in the boardroom. Okay. Great. Thanks, Ira. Uh, Speaking of water conservation, excuse me, before I get to water conservation, it sounds like, looks like Kush may, may I, have a question he, or comment. Uh, it's not a question, it's an actual positive comment on the landscape. As I was leave, leaving the house this morning to come to the meeting, uh, the, the riding mowers were mowing outside my building. And what I noticed was after the mowers were gone, there was a guy with a blower blowing all the clippings off the sidewalks. And although they were blowing it right onto the grass, but it was cleaned out immediately. Although we were, this was a complaint that we were getting for a long time, that they mow the lawn and leave everything a mess. This is a good, good change, which I noticed. And I would like to compliment the landscape department for following up and taking care of it. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. Yes. All right, uh, water conservation. Thank you very much. And water follows landscape because of course, water and landscaping are so closely related. And the Water Conservation Committee meets only quarterly. And that meeting is next week on the 28th on Thursday afternoon. I share that with you because the morning of the 28th is a very important meeting at the El Toro Water District where they will be discussing the potential for rate increases. And so that meeting, which will be at their headquarters in their boardroom, is also available on Zoom. But I can assure you I'll be there either <laughs> in person or on Zoom, depending upon the best way that it works, so that I'll be able to report whatever we heard at that public hearing at our afternoon meeting. In addition, 
What's really exciting for me is we've had interest from the community. I get emails periodically, people saying, um, how does one get to your meeting? And they used to be up on the second floor in the Sycamore room, which is hard to get to for people. And so I'm delighted to announce and let everybody know that those meetings have now been moved down permanently to the Elm Room which is a room that, in case you've never seen it before, is on the main floor, very easy to get to. Just ask at the desk, and they will point you in the right direction. It not only... Uh, the boardroom is, is a lovely room, but, it, number one, we could get bumped if there were a budget meeting or something that took a higher priority. And second, it's not as conducive to a conversation. Uh, we're not here for conversation when we have board meetings, and so that's okay. But we'd love to engage some of our members and residents in conversation about water conservation. So that room, which is a little smaller, a little more intimate, um, and certainly more accessible, is where our meetings will be from now on. And so that will be at 2 o'clock in the afternoon in the L room, L room, and that's July, April, I mean, January, April, July, October, uh, the four times a year. If necessary, we may have to have some special meetings. And again, I invite everybody, this meeting will be important. We will be talking about whatever we've learned from the El Toro Water District in the morning. Also be talking about, as you heard um, Director Lewis mention, the need to consider what to do about excessive watering uh, resident watering using that hose on the outside. And the reason that is such an issue, Third Mutual, most of it, not Gates 11 and 14, but all of the rest, are recycled water. But the hose that is attached to that outside spigot is residential water. It's potable water. That's the water that is carried and paid for, you know, hundreds of miles to get here. And it's the water that we are not getting very much of anymore. And so given our limited or non-existent storage down here, um, it's really important. So we're going to be talking about, you know, how do we deal with that? Do we get as strict as some of the places near Los Angeles where you can only outside water a couple of days a week? You know, we, so, so we'd love your resident input for that. So please, we welcome you. And, uh, of course, whatever happens at that meeting will be reported at the next board meeting. Thank you. Thanks, Don. I look forward to attending. Right. And finally, we have the uh, third resident policy and compliance committee. Uh, the, that committee last met on Tuesday, June 28th, where we discussed the overall compliance process to help ensure that the committee members, as well as any attending third board members, understood the basic processes that compliance follows. Uh, we also discussed and voted on updating the resolution regarding deactivating cable and internet service um, as a disciplinary action that we already discussed this morning. And the Resident Policy and Compliance Committee will next meet on Wednesday, July 27th at 9.30 here in the boardroom. And we plan to discuss several policies including barbecue rules uh, and regulations and the social media policy. So hope to see you there. Um, and now we'll move on to agenda item 15, sharing our GRF monthly committee reports, starting with the report of the Community Activities Committee. Annie? Thank you, uh, President Laws. The Community Activities Committee met, um, uh, when did we meet? July 14th. Thank you. <laughs> We met on uh, July 14th. Um, uh, direct, um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm losing my words here. There was a report from Brian Gruner regarding staffing, and he's, he indicated that staff recruitment, recruiting is looking more positive, and he received more applicants and recently hired, hired on six part-time rec leaders with more schedule over the next several days. He reported also in terms of Clubhouse One, a new projector screen is to be installed on August 4th. The Garden Center is composting class is scheduled for August. In terms of the PAC, um, renovation continues to be in the billiard room, kitchen, and rehearsal room, and new flooring in the kitchen. Also, in addition, there was a high-spirited discussion regarding the online reservation system 
uh, between the tennis club people and the swim people, and uh, the committee listened to all points of views and have decided to go back and relook at the guidelines in order to come up with an amicable solution for for all. So, committee will be looking at that more, and there will be more to report. In addition, the upcoming events, uh, July 18th is movie, which is Belfast at the PAC, and that's at 2 p.m. On August 4th, there's a patio concert, Private Eye, Clubhouse 1 at 6.30 p.m. August 12th, Splash Pool Day at Pool 2 with uh, children and with grandchildren. August 15th, there's a Monday movie, House of Gucci, that's going to be at the PAC at 2 p.m. August 20th, Queen Nation, also at the PAC at 3 p.m. Uh, there's a monthly dinner at Clubhouse 5 in, on August 22nd, Clubhouse 5 at 5 p.m. August 27th, Saturday Night Dance at Clubhouse 5 at 5.30 p.m. August September 10th is Grandparent Fun Day at Clubhouse 5. September um, 17th, Ronstadt R- Revival, that's at the PAC at 7 p.m. September 9th, movie, West Side Story, also at the PAC. Outdoor concert, Clubhouse 2 at 4 p.m. And Saturday night dance at Clubhouse uh, 5 at 5.30 p.m. The next meeting for the Community Activities Committee will be August 11th at 1.30 p.m., boardroom and virtual. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Sounds like a lot going on. Uh, All right, moving to the Equestrian Center Ad Hoc Committee. Kush? We have the same issue. Uh, this month there was no equestrian center committee because the last one was on May 25th. The next one is on August 31st, uh, 2022 at 1 p.m. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, GRF Finance Committee. Donna? Yes, thank you. GRF Finance Committee meets every other month. The last meeting was... Um, June 15th, and therefore the next meeting, official meeting, will be August 17th. But in between, GRF finance people, as well as all of the boards, have been very busy on budget processes. Last uh, Monday, there was an all-boards meeting where everybody was there to hear. And GRF, it looks like, they are not on their absolute final budget, but it looks like, as you heard uh, President Law say at the beginning of the meeting, that the GRF portion of our monthly assessment will be $3.81. That's where it stands now. That isn't final, but it, they seem to have cut where they can cut. Um, so, and that's it. And again, as I mentioned, the next meeting, official meeting of the Finance Committee is August 17th at 1.30 in the boardroom. But finance things are going on, especially at this time of the year, all the time. Okay, thank you. Uh, next, the GRF Landscape Committee. Ira, you have updates? Uh, yeah. Um Beginning of the meeting, uh, the chair, Chair Skillman, uh, recognized uh, uh, two employees uh, from Landscape for their outstanding, uh, outstanding work, and then moved uh, directly uh, the update on the master controller irrigation system, which I'm happy to say uh, has been approved. And uh, later on, uh, on another meeting, was approved for a, a single-year installation rather than over a multi-year, which will save everybody in the community, not just GRF, but Third and United money um, by using less water, being able to track it better, uh, utilize it better. So that's the, uh, the big news, and it's, it's, it's great news. Um, uh, Kurt Wyman uh, discussed the uh, tree signs in the village and uh, basically saying that we shouldn't replace a, a lot of the old signs are nailed to the tree, which is really a bad thing to do. You end up hurting the tree. It's like putting a nail in your arm. Um, so uh, uh, the discussion was um, made to come up with some order of, uh, other signage system that wasn't going to cost a fortune to do. But uh, So that was back to the committee to look at that. And uh, there were a few uh, tree maps available at the History Center and the Village Library brought up by uh, uh, Chair Skillman. Um, so the the other thing is that uh, work at the creek is ongoing cleanup, um, which is just continual. It's more like uh, 
uh, painting the Golden Gate Bridge. You, once you finish, you just start at the other end and do it again. Uh, it's a never-ending process. And uh, um, Angel uh, De La Torres from the Grounds Maintenance uh, provided a, a short uh, PowerPoint presentation on uh, daily insights of grounds maintenance. And uh, that was about it. Okay. Thanks, Ira. Anything new with the GRF Maintenance and Construction Committee, Ralph? Yeah, we had a little bit. Uh, the last meeting was held on June 8th, which I believe that information was shared during the last meeting of this board. Uh, however, there were a couple of special meetings uh, last month. We'd, one of the things we discussed was feasibility study for Building E, which had been performed by Wrangell Architects. They gave us two estimates for a 10,000-square-foot building. One was for stick construction and one for modular construction as not trailer-type units, but the modular. Um, both, of, both studies were ex, were ex, uh, result in excessively high cost estimates. And as a result, uh, further in-house study will be done regarding space requirements and optimum agency location and other cost-efficient att attempts to uh, improve the situa situation at Building E. Uh, there was also discussion briefly regarding electric auto charging stations. There's still quite a bit of separation between SCE and the village on this matter, including location and how many spaces. Uh, will be committed. They, they want 10, and sometimes we don't want to do that much. But there is an intent to arrange a face-to-face -face meeting with SCE to reach some kind of resolution. Um, next meeting scheduled is August 10. Great. Thanks. Um, next, we'll move to the Clubhouse Facilities Renovation Ad Hoc Committee. John? We had a, uh, an open and a closed meeting. The open meeting was uh, Clubhouse uh, 3 was uh, discussed extensively, and uh, Clubhouse uh, Clubhouse 3 beautification, and uh, Guy West did uh, made a, a presentation, and then the um, the scope of work for that improvement was to be added. Uh, the decision was made to be added to the Clubhouse One uh, uh, award that was going to be discussed and considered at the closed meeting. And then there was further discussion on, on Clubhouse's uh, very uh, beautification. At the closed meeting, then, Clubhouse One was awarded uh, and uh, it was the uh, scope of work for um, Clubhouse 3 uh, interior design well, was added to that. And um, that's the, uh, that, that was the, oh, that was the extent. Uh, the next meeting is to be determined. Okay, great, thanks John. Um, moving on to the Media and Communications Committee. Annie? Thank you, uh, President Laws. The GRF Media and Communications Committee met on July 18th at 1.30 p.m. It was a hybrid meeting. Eileen Pollan submitted a um, report which included engagement efforts in June through eye contact, direct email services, to which flyers, newsletters, and other tools are used to disseminate news and information. She reported that the Average open and click rate illustrate an interest and engagement in the content of all the information that's disseminated. She reported that the workflow continues to be managed through uh, the online project management system Trello, which tracks work performed by staff and freelance graphic artists, including deadline contents, artwork, editing, fact checking, graphic design, and distribution. <laughs> Trello tracked 72 projects in May. In addition, media and communication entered 171 email addresses into iContact and posted 94 items on the website in June. She reported that the, CE, the office of the CEO and the Department of Media and Communication worked together to handle an average of 24 phone calls and 20 emails each day, totaling more than 500 calls and 400 emails per month. 
Uh, she reported that Village YouTube subscriber count is going up monthly. Viewership on board meetings has gone up in the past months. Uh, meeting communication staff attended um, the July GVA meeting in which staff demonstrated to the residents how to navigate through the online website, which was very well received. It was a short meeting, and so um, with lots of discussion, the next Media and Communication Committee meeting is scheduled for August 15th at 1.30 p.m. in the boardroom and as virtual. Thank you. Great, great. Thanks, Annie. Um, Kush, what's new with the Mobility and Vehicles Committee? Nothing much. Um, uh, the same, same issue. All my meetings are every other month. Okay. So we did not meet again in this last month. Um, so nothing new to report. Our next meeting is August 3rd, 2022 at 1.30 p.m. in the boardroom. Okay. Yeah. All right. You'll be busy next month. Yeah. I know. Uh, the Security and Access and Community Access Committee. I think, Annie, you're updating um, us here. Yes. Thank you, President Laws. I just have a few things to report. Uh, I mean, I'm just going to read from the staff report. Um, uh, one of the items that's on the staff report, uh, staff recommends adding four universal bicycle signs that say bicycles, bicycles are prohibited signage to the main entrance point at Aliso Creek Park with a supplemental appropriation of $740 to be funded from the equipment fund. Another staff report. Um, sorry about that. That was the only staff report, my apologies. And I'm not sure if uh, Director Wayne reported on this committee before he left. Um, so I'm just looking at the staff report. If not, I will go through the notes and I'll have an updated uh, report for the next committee meeting. The next meeting for the Security uh, Community and Access Committee is scheduled for um, August 22nd at 1.30 p.m. in the boardroom here. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Andy. Um, it looks like Kush has a question or comment. I didn't follow what you said the first thing. Did they want to buy bicycles? Uh, no, at signage. Oh, signage vehicles. that says um, bicycles are prohibited. Oh, uh, Because really? apparently there is... You have to pass by the creek. Oh, uh, okay, On the creek. Okay. Sorry, My I apologies completely missed it. I wasn't speaking clearly <laughs> enough. Sorry about that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Donna, how's the things with the disaster preparedness? Time? Well, they haven't met since March 29th. <laughs> okay. However, however, the timing is perfect because their next meeting is July 26th, which is next week. Okay. And people are encouraged to come and attend. It'll be right here in the boardroom. And the main thing that was brought up at that March meeting is still an issue, and that is the need for more good neighbor captains. And they would very much appreciate anybody interested in volunteering. Please let them know their office is right here on the main floor, just kind of outside the boardroom and around the corner. Uh, so again, that next meeting, July 26, 930, right here in the boardroom. Okay. All right. Laguna Woods Village traffic hearings. John, you have an update for us? The uh, meeting was held on uh, June 15th. Uh, there were three traffic violations that were addressed. Uh, the first two, one was a parking violation and the second was a, a stop sign violation. Uh, the uh, violators were found guilty. The third was a, uh, a parking violation that was discussed uh, extensively. Uh, there are a number of uh, cul-de-sacs. Uh, most of them are, that I know of are around uh, Clubhouse 5, where the parking outside the garage door uh, distance is uh, limited, and when a car parks there, it blocks the sidewalk. And uh, so the, the committee voted uh, three to two to find the uh, defendant not guilty because that, that issue has to be addressed. And... Um, the next meeting is was scheduled for tomorrow, but it has uh, the, there was an email that said it had been canceled, and I haven't heard otherwise. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, GRF Strategic Planning Committee, Ira. 
Uh, the meeting, uh, the committee has not met since uh, May 2nd, so there's nothing, really nothing new to report. Uh, just, I can give you a quick overview. What did happen on the previous meeting is uh, CEO Foster uh, provided an overview of uh, the three-year goals from uh, the VMS strategic planning meeting from March, and uh, we are in the process of waiting for questionnaires to see how uh, the committee itself should move forward, what would be the most important thing to do, and uh, that's where it stands, and uh, the next meeting will be announced hopefully soon. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, next, we have the Information Technology Advisory Committee, and that committee known as ITAC last met on Friday, July 8th. Uh, this committee is currently providing executive oversight to the ERP project. Uh, during the month of June, uh, there were a lot of requirements workshops where staff reviewed all of the financial functionality and identified current issues and requirements for the new ERP system. Now in July, workshops are underway to review the functionality of the new ERP system and confirm that it meets all of staff's requirements and if not, discuss potential approaches to how those requirements can be met. And the ITAC will next meet this coming Friday, July 22nd. Uh, moving on to the purchasing ad hoc committee, Donna, any, I don't think there's been any updates. Yeah, uh, when, when that committee met on April 7th, we looked at policies to make them a lot cleaner so that hopefully purchasing would move more smoothly. And that was all brought back to GRF, and we will be waiting. And no, no future meetings are scheduled, and will happen if there's a need to review that policy. Okay, thank you. Um, next, the ad website ad hoc committee. Annie. Uh, thank you, President Laws. The website ad hoc committee met on July 6th, and uh, it would, had been a long time since we met, and the meeting that we actually had scheduled conflicted with another meeting, and so... Um, some of the members were not able to attend. So we, we were able to review the charter. Uh, we reviewed the minutes from the last, commit, last meeting. Uh, one of the things that we talked about was the purpose. The purpose of the website ad hoc committee is to engage the expertise of internet and technology experts among residents and staff to develop a scope of work and a uh, RFP and to select the most qualified vendors to execute and improve website for Laguna Woods Village. We talked about that um, in addition to reviewing the charter. We just picked out a few of the things that we uh, thought were important for, for us to look at and some of the critical areas that require significant attention for this committee is um, including but not limited to site navigation, search site content and documents, document management, single documents, repository for website, granicris, and uh, shares. It also needs to have a, a resident portal for signing in, a, a place for posting resolutions and minutes, past, present, and active, a club page, a contact form. The new website must cooperate with the community's governing structure as well as granicus, our team-up calendar, and resident porters. It was also reported that a survey had been sent out to key VMS staff that are actually using the website to get their input as to any additional feedback that they may have for the website so that as we move forward and submit an RFP, we will have all this additional information. Uh, and even though several members were not able to attend the meeting, the minutes for the meeting and, and the, um, all the other documents were sent to the mem committee members so that they could provide feedback so that our next meeting we'll be able to put together the RFP and send it out to the vendors. The uh, next meeting is to be determined based on the feedback that we get from the rest of the, the VMS departments that utilize the computer and also from the board members. And that's the end of my report. Okay, thanks, Annie. All right, finally, we have the Insurance Ad Hoc Committee. Now, this committee is made up of representatives from GRF, United, and third boards, and last met on Friday, sorry, uh, I, I have Friday, June 17th, but I'm not sure that's correct. Uh, but the purpose of the committee is to work together to identify approaches to reduce the cost of property insurance within the village. 
Options being explored include, but are not limited to, starting our own insurance company, self-insuring, and combining United and Third's purchasing power to get better pricing. The next uh, meeting of the Ad Hoc Insurance Committee is this coming Monday, July 25th. And that includes our committee reports. We're now at future agenda items. Uh, agenda item 16, are there any items that any of the directors would like to add here to be discussed in an upcoming board meeting? We may want to put a placeholder for El Toro Water District depending upon the outcome of that public hearing and how the changes in water charges might affect us. Okay. And, and the rationale for them because they do have some big expenses coming up that okay. can be avoided. Thank you. Any others, Jim? Uh, just a question for Donna. Do you have the actual information on the El Toro on how people can watch it? You mentioned that they could. You know, yes, yes. Thank you very much. I, with all those reports, I kind of <laughs> got lost. But yes, that to watch it on Zoom, the best thing to the link itself is available on the El Toro Water District website. And, and I don't have it. You know, I'm just going to go there myself because that meeting does start at 7.30 in the morning and to get ourselves over there might be a long day. Um, so, yes. So they, they have not post, they have not given us the link, but the link is to be on the website and it might actually be there by now. But it will be important. I think we all need to kind of keep a look abreast of what's happening there. So thank you. Thanks. Any other future agenda items? All right, we're now at director comments. Um, yeah, we'll start with Jules. Hey, no comment for Jules, Ira? Uh, no additional. Okay, Jim? No further comment. All right, John? No, no comment, thank uh, you. Thanks. Ralph? No comment, thank right. you. Annie? Yes, I have one uh, comment, and that is to, to all the residents of Laguna Woods. With the weather being so hot, it's really important that we stay hydrated and um, watch it when you're crossing streets because the sun shines out really brightly and sometimes people are driving really fast around those curbs. So in addition to staying hydrated, stay safe as you walk along the streets. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Anne. Chris? Yeah. No update? Donna? No additional yeah. comments. Good. No, thank you. All right. Uh, Javon, anything? No, okay. okay. Paul? Okay. And the, uh, the only thing I have is just a reminder, our next uh, monthly town hall is scheduled for next Wednesday, July 27th from 3 to 5 in Clubhouse 2. These monthly events are open forums uh, where you, you as members can share your questions, suggestions, concerns with me and other board members. This month I'm planning on being joined by um, Ira Lewis and Kush Bada. So thank you all. And with that, the business of our open meeting has completed. At this time, the monthly board meeting will recess and reconvene to close session. Thank you. Everybody.